What is up my friends? Welcome back to another video and today we are starting a brand new segment and I don't know what to call it so far. Maybe the title already has a cool catchphrase to this, but we're going to be doing kind of a review of a walkthrough. And so basically I, I'm going to start watching some developer walkthroughs of certain libraries and it's going to be like kind of like a first impressions thing. So I'm not going to have the library. I'm just going to be watching it from an outsider's perspective and kind of determining whether I, and hopefully you uh, need this library, the pros and cons of the library, how, you know, how it sounds, how it plays the legato, whatever it is and approach it from kind of like a, an outsider's perspective. And so this is a little bit different than what we've done before. We usually see uh, actual sample library reviews and walkthroughs and demos from third-party sources like myself or D Daniel James, whatever. But, um, but I wanted to try something different and uh, I'm really excited to give this a go. Um, of course, be, you know, due to this being the developer's own walkthrough, um, it's probably gonna be dressed up and sounding as best as it can be, but no library is perfect. We'll see how it goes. And hopefully we, uh, you enjoy this kind of uh, segment. Let me know if you want to see more of these. Um, but before we do that though, I want to give you my sample library buyer's guide yet, uh, in case you don't have it yet, it's totally free. And it combines all of my personal recommendations that I use on a regular basis, containing all the orchestral sections like strings, winds, brass, and percussion, but also some other things like piano libraries, jazz libraries, ethnic libraries, and others in there as well. And it's all condensed into a very easy to read digestible guide that you can read within an hour or so. And so I want to give that to you as a gift for watching this video. Just click the link below. It'll take you straight there and hopefully you enjoy it as my gift to you for watching this video. So without any further ado, let's kick things off with Spitfire's Abbey Road 2 Iconic Strings. The only thing I really know about this library is that it's like solo string based. So let's have a listen and go through it. Here we go. So very like biting sound out of the box. That's kind of cool. I think Spitfire libraries have always had really good shorts for their, uh, oh, that grit, that bowing on there, that's nice. So you get some portamento in there, okay. Handling that fast run pretty well. This kind of reminds me of probably like the performance type of legato patch. <laughs> Paul conducting is hi there. Paul uh, Thompson here from Spitfire Audio. <sighs> nice. I've got something really exciting for really? you. Really? This wow. is the most famous string sound in the world. Nice. It will be cemented in your subconscious with the sound of the Beatles hit Eleanor Rigby, Ooh. but also other 60s classics that were recorded in Abbey Road Studio 2. I, I love when they do these this is a kind of uh, video shots of the, the live performances. It's always really cool. A great marketing tactic as well. Um, because why not show like the behind the scenes of the actual library and the actual processing of it and all that. Really unique one of a kind library. We haven't just used some vintage gear or tried to get a vintage sound for the vintage path of this library. We have used the same equipment that was used in the 60s to record this incredible This reminds me of um, Cinesample's 90s also retro trumpets. Modern parts as where well. Where they use the exact same uh, microphones and kind of set up to replicate the trumpet sound of, uh, I think it was E.T. So uh, kind of a similar approach here to replicate that exact sound in the 60s and 70s. You get the best of both worlds. Let's dive straight in. And as we move through the library, I'll tell you a little bit more about the different elements that make it up. Cool. Nice. Very biting shorts. Very nice. Slightly longer there. So it sounds like the quiet. It sounds like the lighter he plays, maybe the the. I mean, the, obviously the quieter the sample is, but in addition to that, it sounds like there are some differing lengths there of the spiccato as well. Now the braccato naturally is going to be longer, and you do get the like. Uh, the, the studio space sound in there as well, which is nice. Cool, nice pizzicato. So we've got a huge amount of short articulations in the library, all recorded in great depth and with huge detail. And as you can see, you even have access to different bowing patterns as well. Okay. Now let's check out that sound. At the moment, we're listening to mix one, which is a clear, modern sounding mix. But I'm going to switch to the first vintage mix so okay. you can check out what that sounds like. Vintage mix. Okay, so definitely panned hard left. 
So this mix is passing through Abbey Road's vintage red desk with parallel compression from the RS124, all going through the J37 tape machine. This is the exact same signal path used in the Eleanor Rigby recordings. Okay. It's definitely a nice warmth and weight to the sound, for sure. It's not like the most pristine sound you'll ever hear, but there's a charm to it that, that does sound very nice. The, uh, the actual panning, though, is kind of throwing me off a little bit <laughs> of these different... So that's the wonderful notes. sound of the long saltasto. And I've got an ensemble patch up here, but yeah, let me show you how this is working, because this is really rather clever. We have an arranger, which is to help you when you're kind of busking in ideas to split out the voices and make an arrangement for you as you're playing. As you okay. can see, each instrument can be set according to the range that you want it to play oh, in. Oh, that's kind of cool. But also- This reminds me of um, Cinesamples has something similar. I think they call it their Accord Arranger or something, but it's like you can set this certain range of the, of the instrument and especially in an ensemble patch, it's like if you play like a middle C, you can set the violins and the violas to trigger there. But if you don't want the violins in there, you can just, you know, tighten up the range of the instrument to only play above middle C or something. So it's kind of interesting. We have a multi voice mode. So if you want all of the instruments to play everything you play on the keyboard, you can yeah. switch this on. And as you'll see, the UI changes and it mm. gives you the ability to specify the start and end notes of each range. Okay, so this is pretty much what set of did, yeah. how they come in over a certain smaller range. So between C1 and F sharp 1, for example, here on the cello, mm -hmm. that's where this instrument starts to come in and increases in volume hmm. as you get up towards the F1. Oh, that's kind of cool. And as you can see, it's incredibly easy to change that. That's pretty innovative. What does I that like that. That's like? cool. Well, that's let's cool. have a listen. Ah, uh, that makes sense. That's kind of cool. So it's like at, at C1, I believe he's saying that the cello comes in, but it's not very loud. It's very quiet. But as you go up to the F sharp, then you get the full volume of the cello and all the same volume here. And then as you go higher and higher up to the C5, you're going to get less and less volume in the cello. That's kind of interesting. I haven't seen that before. And of course, we can switch back to mix one so mm -hmm. that we're listening to the uh, more modern clear mix. Let's put our normal long notes on and have a listen. Yeah, I mean, this mix one is definitely a little fuller and a little more buttery, maybe. I don't know. The, the vintage mix seems a little clearer in a way, actually. Now comparing both of them. Very beautiful. And little going more back reverb in there as well. to multi-voice off, which gives us our uh, arranger. Yeah, but the sound in those samples is just gorgeous. It really is beautiful. Great sound. As you would come to expect from Spitfire. I think solo strings are notoriously hard to sample, <laughs> just due to the nature of the legato really and how the sound. notes blend together. And incredibly fun to play. Yeah. Let's have a listen to some legato. Okay, I've here picked we go. the viola. It's often a neglected instrument, but it just sounds really soulful and beautiful. Okay. Very interesting. I'm not sure how much of it is like actual bold legato versus uh, slurred legato, like fingered legato as well. But um, obviously, this being a very simple patch to use, just using the performance legato, it's very difficult to get a hundred percent convincing phrase because you know some of those faster notes when he's coming down in arpeggios, for example. Usually, the musician wouldn't go bowing back and forth on every note. Usually, they'd be going. Duh. Da, 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 right and then maybe they go back and forth if they need to do some more gritty stuff that's more repetitive but um the actual connection between the notes is you can definitely hear that they're they're very smooth but yeah it feels like there's a slight like <gasps> before um eat the second all of note the instruments in. are incredibly very slight agile. hiccup for me let's compare the violin one with the violin two section now 
Okay, so the very fast run, the notes kind of smear together slightly, but... Ah, uh, you get the, the, the short notes in there too, which is kind of cool. Absolutely. To the left. Nice. Beautifully intense, crisp, and in your face. Now, what you're hearing there is the performance legato. Now, in the core library, you have the full functionality of the performance legato, with the exception of those last portamento slides, which I was demonstrating there. That's good to Those know. are in the pro library. In the core library, also mix wise, you have the main mix one and you have that vintage mix one. Now, okay, just a, a quick clarification here. I think for most people, the core library is enough. Like if you're interested in the Abbey Road sound and you want those solo strings, the core library will do very nicely. The articulation list, I believe is nearly identical. And the biggest difference though, is the amount of microphone positions and the footprint it takes on your computer. So I believe when doing a little bit of research, the core library takes up like 30 to 50 gigabytes or something. And the pro library takes up like 10 times that or something like 250 or up to like 300 or something gigabytes. So, so something crazy for just one library. So for most people, I think the core library is more practical and just having two mixes that are already ready to go. I mean, if I was to buy this library, I would definitely just go with the core library myself. But in the pro library, there are a large number of other mixes and I'm gonna show yeah. you a couple of those now. Now, while mix one is formed around the close condensers and LCR one, which is a kind of, uh, like a Decca tree that is kind of closer to the players, mm -hmm. but it's made of those M50s. Mix two is based around the ribbon mics and LCR2, which are the fabulous new Abbey Road red mics. That's kind Check of cool. this out. It's definitely, you know, still pan left. I mean, that's a, obviously a deter, um, a very conscious decision, but a little warmer on this mic, for sure. Not as much crisp high end as you get for mix one, I think. I mean, ultimately, at the end of the day, it just comes down to how it sounds to you. Like, do you like the sound of the library? They can really use any mic they wanted to, and they can hire the best musicians, the best engineers, but at the end of the day, does it serve your own purposes, and do you like the sound that's coming out from the, the, the sampler, from the instruments themselves, from the recordings. And that's ultimately what uh, is the most important thing to make your decision on for a library purchase. And actually, if we go back to the arranger and choose the Spiccato Ensemble, it's a very easy, clear way to hear the difference in the room sound and how close it feels to the strings. So let's just check these out in turn. That's very close, that's nice. A lot of bite on those strings for sure. Vintage 2 has a little bit of that classic ADT sound applied that's used in lots and lots of 60s tracks to give you a little bit of extra thickness. Okay. So LCR1 is our M50s. Um, and again, this is like the kind of tree of this arrangement. Yeah, a lot more room sound in there. Definitely good to blend those together with the spot microphones or the really close ones. An LCR2 made of those amazing new red mics. Now we're isolating the close mics and that's that tight, crisp, modern sound of those great condenser mics. Okay. There you get the beautiful, warm, rounded sound of those close ribbon mics. Sure. Here we have that classic vintage sound. This is the sound that you will have in your mind's eye of this era of music and these arrangements. Um, with these ones, we have the KM54s on the violin ones, twos and violas, and U47s on the cellos and There's bases. There's so many different names for these microphones specific and serial all of that. Numbers I just, from Mirik and Sam they, they all just blend together for me. Collection. Like I'm not a microphone expert at all, just so that's probably part of it. But mics. when they start Let's talking about like, we use this mic and this mic and this mic, I'm just like, all right, how does it sound, you know? Um, and I'll be completely honest, like all these different microphone positions, while great to have, and I'm sure if you are someone who loves to just tweak until you get that perfect sound, um, honestly, like when you listen to all these different positions, they don't have that much of a difference, in my opinion. Like, even if I was to look at a Cine Samples or a Custodial Tools Library and, uh, you know, they had a, t a ton of different mic positions, 
going through them, all they really care about is how much high end is in there, how much low end is in there, what's the clarity of the sound like, how much warmth is there, you know, compared to like, you know, the, the high end or whatever, and also how much room sound is there, how much reverb automatically uh, uh, by default is applied to the sound. And that's really all I care about. Um, so the, these are all nice to haves, I think. So that's why splitting it into the core versus pro library makes a lot of sense for Spitfire, but- Stereo ribbon. Usually the core is enough to go off of, I would say. This is the Roya SF24, an XY arrangement. Yeah, but the actual so like those are our stereo mix, and short which are a pair of short MK21s so in ORTF That's formation. Really, really nice. And last but not least are the ambient mics. And that's a pair of Sherps 2H at the back wall in a spaced Omni formation. So okay. you can Good combine these mics in a really fantastic way to get a, the feel of the of the spaces that you're recording in if you want that extra bit of width. And I'll show you how to do that now. So here I'm using mainly these fantastic close vintage mics, but also I've dialed in the ambience to get that kind of extra distance to the back wall of the studio. And that sounds like this. And if you alter nice. that balance and uh, make it in favor of the distant mics. So he's basically talking about how to blend the different mics together. That's kind of cool. He's going to go And so here you can see that we're changing okay. the kind of focus. Now, if we go back to our uh, violin one and using that same mix, I'll show you some of the different long articulations in the library. Okay. So sustains only, basically. They're, they're a way of um, saying sustains, they're just, they call it longs. There's this wonderful really nice scratchy sound. soul pont. I mean, what you're really buying here is the actual, uh, the sound, like the name of the- This is where you can the, start to see, we're coming into this know, kind of sound world as sound well, of the, of the kind of Nicholas Brattel, the Johnny Greenwood, of using yeah. these sounds to paint uh, a kind of beautiful and undulating um, soundscape around yourself. And we can actually get even more distance into the sounds. I'll show you how to do that. I'm not going to use any close mics at all. I'm going to put up the LCR and leave the ambience all the way up. So, and I'm using LCR2, which is the red mics. Okay. And that gives us this fabulous, uh, beautiful, warm sound. Yeah, that is beautiful. Very nice sound, yeah. Isn't that fabulous? And I'm re I'm just using the violin one. So obviously you build your arrangement, you use the individual instruments and you just get such a great sound. Yeah. So ultimately, like these articulations are nothing out of the ordinary, but what you're really buying is the name, like the Abbey Road, of course, but also just the Beatles sound, the Eleanor Rigby sound, right? So... Fabulous harmonics. And then we have the usual things, the trills. And we can use those to build up some great, lovely chord textures. And of course, every single performer is going to be playing their instrument a little differently. So of course there's that, having variety we've got our and tremolos. playing styles and you know, performance techniques. But... And the measured trems, um, which will adapt to your tempo. Oh, that's so here cool. my tempo is set to 120, to but tempo. if I dial that up, That's cool. You can see that incredibly smoothly, you can do tempo ramps and all kinds of things in your sequence. That's great. It just follows the tempo absolutely So it was recorded at 150. For the really gotcha. faster tempos, we've got a 180 performance. Oh, nice. That's great. And again, that follows your tempo. Definitely reminds and me of finally, just regular measure tremolos and like long cinematic tando. studio strings, for example. Yeah, that's nice. Now, if I go back to the mic mixer, and we change the focus of our sound, and I want to have a little bit of that lovely warm stereo ribbon, but the majority okay. of the sound, the close ribbons, and check out this. So yeah, nice clear sound, sounds, you know, panned totally left. And it's absolutely beautiful. It is very nice. The players nice in this sound. library are incredible. First yeah. call session players in London. 
Um, they they play absolutely beautifully. Um, let's go back to the uh, long ensemble and using that same mix, let's have a listen to that long flautando, but with the arranger splitting what I'm playing into the different instruments. That's a very warm and full and wide sound. That's really nice, for sure. I think you hear those loop points as there with the sustains, which is kind of cool. Absolutely wonderful. That might be something and you then, uh, either just like to or give don't you, like. Uh, Here quick the example of our tremolo, of the and we'll go back to mix one to get that really fantastic bright sound. <laughs> And with the uh, major second trill. More or less on the dry side, you can hear from the samples. But I can also hear that they would lend themselves really well to reverb as well, just external processing. Hugely dynamic, um, but also it's really fantastic getting that uh, separation. And of course, we can go back and put on the multi voice, yeah. and that would make it sound like this. Let's hear reverbs the reverbs here. Included in here, which were recorded from Studio 2's beautiful plate collection so we can use a much longer plate reverb okay and you can dial nice. up the amount of reverb you use here that's nice that's creamy that's great let's have a listen to vintage mix one and i'm going to play the cello long flautando yep definitely pan hard right there for sure or I, I should say the, the cellist is positioned uh, more on the right. Giving it plenty of that lovely splosh, it sounds like this. Absolutely wonderful. And even putting that in a lovely, lovely big plate sounds like this. Yeah, the legato for the, sh the longer notes sounds really nice. For the, for the runs, um, slightly weird to me. So but what about these live patches? Well, these are great pretty for when difficult you want to, to just uh, jam on that to instrument runs and you want to be able to play short sure. notes and long notes and not worry about anything else. And that sounds like this. So you yeah. can hear there we've got different attacks as well on that live patch. And if we go back to the cello, we'll be able to see here. Yeah, so when he's playing like the shorter notes, trying to activate like staccatos, for example, you can definitely hear that there, there are those shorter articulations, but I don't think they would be as convincing as if you pulled up a specific like dedicated staccato spiccato patch to do that. But again, if you're just doing like a live performance, kind of, uh, you know, what they're going for here, I think it makes a lot of sense to use these patches, to use these performance or live patches. Because uh, again, they're kind of combining shorts and longs within a single patch, kind of like what um, I think Aaron Venture does with his Infinite uh, series libraries. Nice. <laughs> Super easy to use. For so sure. just to do one more comparison of the two different main mixes, Mix 1 and Vintage Mix 1, using the bass here. Nice fat sound. Definitely um, fatter in the Mix 1, slightly less high-end. Vintage 1 the, has a little uh, more, of, more of the high-end in there. And with Mix 1... Yeah, a little more fatness in the low end for mix one, I would say. Vintage one has a little more mid-high register frequencies in there, I think. Now, it's really great as composers to have access to this 
vast palette of different sound colors. And using this exact same equipment that was used on these fantastic 60s hit records, you know, it's we often go for a kind of color. We're looking for some different kind of vibe on the sound. Yeah. But this isn't trying to simulate the, that different vibe. This actually is that equipment <laughs> that we so often try to reproduce the color of. And it's really great to have the recordings made through this equipment, as well as through the more modern mics and the different kind of, you know, maybe cleaner equipment as well. So that you've got that choice. You can choose to go for the really vibey sound mm -hmm. or you can choose to go for a very clean and maybe more austere sound That's according cool. to the, the type of thing that you're writing. And we've really enjoyed working with Grammy Award winning engineer Sam O'Kell on this library and check out what he's been up to over the last few years online and you'll see why he's the obvious choice to make this library. As I mentioned, this library is fabulous for busking things in. If you're just trying to get some chords down on something, you can use the arranger to just sort out what instrument plays what, or you can uh, have all of the voices playing in multi-voice mode so that you get a kind of chamber ensemble sound. But it's also fabulous for sketching out these beautiful kind of film soundscapes and getting a, a real kind of character and a, you know you can hear the rosin on the bows mm -hmm. it's just so exciting to use and i really hope that you're going to enjoy using this one a lot i really hope that you get as much enjoyment out of this as i have been over the last few months and we look forward to seeing you on the next one Bye bye awesome yeah so awesome uh walkthrough as usual from paul uh, yeah, let's talk about this a little bit. So first impressions, the overall sound feels like it's really been focused on, you know, the just the overall warmth and texture of those string performances, especially with those close mixes and the vintage mics, um, you can really hear the care and the sound that's been gone into the samples, which is really beautiful. Um, Again, I don't think all these extra mic positions are, are necessary personally. Again, for me, it would, it would just be the core library that I would go for because I, I just don't have that much hard drive space to, uh, to not quote unquote waste, but you know, to spend. And so, yeah, I would probably go for the core library if I was to use this library myself. But at the end of the day, you have these different uh, instruments, violins, viola, cello, and bass, which is great to have this quintet. Um, and they're all doing, you know, their, their own unique performances. You have the center articulations for the longs and the shorts. The shorts definitely sound gorgeous, very beautiful. Legato, I don't think you're able to control the type of legato. I think it's mainly due to just the way you play in the line. So I don't know if you can tweak the different like slurred legato versus like bowed legato or finger change or anything like that. I, I don't think that's an option here. But again, if you're going for that, that old retro type of sound, you know, as he says in the Beatles era, you know, Eleanor Rigby stuff, then this seems like a good library to kind of evoke that kind of sound. But again, consider like the tools that you already have. If you already have solo string libraries that have a very clear, beautiful sound that have performances that sound similar to this, you can ask yourself like, will this library really make that much of a difference to my existing palette? If you don't have anything like this and you need solo strings that have this type of nostalgic sound, then this looks like a great option, you know? So it's really just weighing your options and asking yourself what is really necessary for your own palette. For me personally, I don't think I would need this because I already have Cinematic Studio solo strings and I love using that library a lot. And I personally feel like Legato there is better than in this library, but they don't have a performance patch where they combine shorts and longs together in one patch. So the Cinematic Studio one. So having this sort of thing is really good, I would think, for live performances or just, you know, playing on the spot for fun. If you want to come up with sketches, like Paul says, things like that, this seems like a good option for that. All right. So I'm hoping that Spitfire does well with this library. The Abbey Road sound really is lovely for sure. Um, but again, ultimately, it just depends on what you personally need and what you already have. And really just ask yourself, will this library or what will this library do for me that my existing libraries cannot currently do? And so if you can answer that question in a very honest manner, then I think that will give you a good indication of whether you should pick up this library or not. And not just this library, but really any library. So hopefully that, that makes sense. I hope you enjoyed this kind of walkthrough review with me. And uh, if you have any other library walkthrough suggestions you'd be interested in seeing me take a look at, more than happy to uh, entertain those ideas. And yeah, definitely excited to see more stuff in the future. 
And uh, yeah, cheers for Spitfire and any other developer who's really coming up with stuff and trying to innovate and and just put out some great recordings. All right, have a wonderful one. Thank you so much. Again, if you don't have my sample library buyer's guide, definitely check it out for free in the description box below. It uh, combines all of my favorite sample libraries that I would personally use on a regular basis, all categorized by like orchestral stuff, like sections, you know, strings, winds, brats, and percussion, but also some other ones as well, like piano libraries, jazz libraries, ethnic libraries, and so on and so forth. It's all contained in there, super easy to read. So definitely check that out. It's completely free. Just click the link in the box below and it'll take you straight there. And it's my thank you too for checking out this video today. I really appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one and cheers. Take care. Bye-bye.